Hello there, this is Jose Rodriguez back again in this second video having to do with the Canon Pro 100. I'm going to cover a little bit more in depth the use of the Print Studio Pro plugin for Photoshop. It also is available for use within Lightroom for those who only process images out of Lightroom. But I'm going to go ahead and stick in this case with Photoshop. So I have loaded this image of some fall foliage and I have opened Print Studio Pro by clicking on File Automate and then on the Print Studio Pro plugin. And it opens up as you see here. Now basically what you do initially of course is you want to choose your printer. And as you can see here it has also picked up my 9000 and my 9500 Mark II printers. Now any time that you have these and I believe it might even work with other PIXMA printers but I'm not sure because I do not have any other PIXMA printers installed but I'm glad that it actually picked up all of these so anyway for it to be able to use the XPS driver which is the 16-bit driver allows you to print say for instance from 16-bit TIFF files or from your raw workflow if you work within Lightroom you're working basically in raw and also in the similar to Profoto RGB working space or color space so it behooves you to use the XPS now whether you visually you'll be able to see a an improvement between the regular 8-bit driver and the 16-bit driver I haven't really checked yet or I haven't really uh, done enough testing to see if there is a difference between the two visually but as of now I'm just sticking with the XPS version so that's the one I will pick now I have two Canon papers I have the Photo Paper Pro Platinum and the Photo Paper Pro Luster and we'll just go ahead and, and stick with the Luster for the time being on the next tab down you will see your sizes and basically this is where you choose your stock paper sizes as well as create custom ones if you click on the custom one you will be able to then create custom paper sizes now I'm not sure whether you will be able to print borderless for instance or maintain certain margin conditions uh, I know that if you stick with the basic standard default sizes you will be able to do so but for now, just for this experiment, we're just going to go ahead and stick with the letter size 8.5 by 11. And we'll click OK. All right, now let me go back because I was still on the custom tab. Now we have two options the manual feed and the rear tray. This paper is not very thick, so we will stick with the regular rear tray, which is basically the one on top of the printer. You open up a lid and you have a dual adjustable margin. A paper with guide as you saw in the preliminary setup video now because I'm printing on luster I'm gonna go ahead and uh, choose high luster and glossy um, you can choose the high resolution choice and it will take advantage of the much finer dot per inch dithering pattern that the printer will produce standard of course will give you a slightly faster printing I print individual images I'm not in a hurry for anything so I'll just stick with high now custom I believe it allows you to choose on your own the setting and as you can see for my luster I cannot go below three so I will choose number one and that's what we will use high quality is number four I haven't really delved to see what the actual printing resolution in dots per inch that is I really it really doesn't concern me the results I have gotten from high on the luster paper are just absolutely stunning the detail is just unsurpassed okay so let's just go ahead and leave it at high for now now if I was to print this in black and white and I did not do the conversion to black and white and adjusted the different colors using the black and white fil filter tool 
In other words, if I want to make my reds appear lighter or my greens appear darker, I can do so in the black and white conversion tool within Photoshop. But this is a quickie way to convert to black and white. It may not give you the results you are looking for, but nevertheless, it allows you to print directly from a color image file and do a fairly decent conversion to black and white. Well, we're going to be doing this in color. So we'll go ahead and uh, leave that alone for now. I'm going to close that tab and open up the layout tab. Now this gets a little bit interesting. You can do a custom layout, you can do a borderless layout, which basically will just enlarge the image beyond the paper's edges. And of course that will produce overspray and that may crop portions of your image if your paper uh, proportions do not match your image file proportions. So it's up to you. I will leave it bordered. You can also do one borderless on top, another borderless on the bottom if you have uh, two files open. You can also do a bordered top and a bordered bottom. Four to a page borderless and four to a page with borders. Okay, here we go. So this is similar to, say, for instance, Key Image, where you're allowed to uh, load several images on one sheet of paper. Now you could adjust the actual borders within here. We'll go back to the single border print, and I will show you how to do so. You can actually do it like so. and you see that as I move the sliders the borders change or you can do it manually you can actually just move it it's running a little bit slow because I'm using a, a video capture program which does really hog all your resources and this computer is only a 4 core with only 8 gigs of RAM uh, in, in order for me to be doing uh, video capture and have full usage of all of these other tools I would have to upgrade which at this point I just find unnecessary I just put up with a little bit of slowness as you can see though I am able to enlarge and resize the image on the fly okay I've gone ahead and reset the image to a single bordered equal borders on the top on the bottom and right and left but as you can see you can actually adjust this as you please okay so now you also have a choice of centering the image horizontally centering it vertically or none the default is none so that you can actually manually move the image around but if you want to automatically center it you can just go ahead and click on that. Alright, now if I wish I could turn my borders black which would you know tend to create say if I was printing a poster and I had some text on the region here maybe a, a caption or my name my logo I could do so and it does uh, produce a rather striking print especially on glossy material but uh, in this case we'll just go ahead and uh, stick with the regular margin now image size and width so this is again a sizing set of sliders that allow you to do so by simply sliding the sliders and the positioning allows you to change the positioning like so and again once you change any of those parameters if you look above here this layout option now goes to custom if you want to return to your so-called default setup you just go back to border and one inch now everybody's complaining about the uh, sometimes forced borders on certain art papers well really folks if you go to any art gallery any art print worth its salt will have a border around them onto which the photographer 
can sign his signature. I don't have any problem with the uh, enforced borders. If I do, then I will just use a different paper setting to fool the printer into thinking that I'm printing on regular matte paper. Because a lot of the art type papers, ICC profiles were actually produced using matte paper as the actual paper choice. So you would get no quality degradation at all by using matte paper in the paper choice on top here. So that would then allow you to adjust your borders to whatever width you please. So let's go ahead and go back to our default setting and we are done with layout. Again you can also do the portrait orientation or landscape. I tend to always print in this plugin with the landscape orientation. Alright so let's go ahead and close this tab and we're going to go over to the most important one which is color management. This is the one that gets most people. Now most of the time when you're using your printer and you're printing out of Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever the application may be but definitely an application that allows you to color manage your printing you will have to make a choice you either allow the printer to control color or you allow your application to control color but never both if you do so you end up with a double profile print basically is I tell the print what color it should be and then the person at the printing lab decides he's going to change the color to whatever he feels it should be on top of my settings so you get a double adjustment which ends up usually on a heavily color cast print maybe dark maybe just totally off so we're going to go ahead and adapt a color managed workflow where we allow the application to control how each color is mapped to that specific paper through an ICC profile. The ICC profile contains all of the adjustments necessary for every shade of color, every nuance, so that the printer knows how to properly mix the inks and reproduce those values being sent to it. Now, that is done by using an ICC profile. That is like a translator. It tells the printer how to translate the color values being sent to it to ink values and ink mixtures. And it magically works, believe it or not. So here we are. We're going to tell the plugin to use ICC profile. And it will automatically choose the correct profile for you, which is wonderful. So as you can see, if you choose Canon Pro Luster, Photo Pro Luster, it will automatically choose that profile for you. And I believe it even turns off color management within the actual driver because the plugin sort of acts as a go between the application, which is Photoshop, through the plugin, and then ultimately to the print driver. This is not a driver, this is just a go between. But it actually allows you to almost automate it color manage print flow because. All you have to do is pick the paper. Now, if you are using your own profiles, I have to give you a little bit of a warning. They have to be version 2. This plugin, for some reason, does not recognize version 4 profiles, which is what the x ray Color Monkey Photo is defaulted to produce. So you have to actually change that preference within the Color Monkey software so that it will output a version 2 profile. Now, if we click on the actual profile, you'll get a drop-down menu, and here we can actually locate one of the ones that I actually created, and here we are. So this is my profile for luster paper for the Canon Photo Pro Luster. So you see it's got my name on it, and I use OEM inks. And I would click that, and now it's going to not use the default or canned profile and through my testing I have arrived at the conclusion that although the profile is quite excellent it does produce slightly warm black and white prints. The difference in color is almost unnoticeable between a well saturated color image such as this printed through the canned profile and say my custom made profile. 
However, where you see the differences is when you print black and white. And that's when you see it. My print, when viewed under daylight conditions, looks neutral. Their print, printed with their profile, looks slightly warm. Now, is that bad? Absolutely not. I kind of like the little warmth to the black and white. You know, that would depend on your paper base. If you use a paper base that's slightly warmer than, say, uh, the Pro Luster. Some of the Burrito papers have a warm base and that will create a much warmer black and white. So again, it all depends on the look you are after. Like I said, either profile produces excellent results. It's just that because I actually made a custom one, which takes into account my individual printer, my batch of paper, my batch of ink, to produce the best profile possible, I get a very neutral looking print. Okay, so now let's just say this is what I want. You also have the choice for your two basic rendering intents. Those of you who know which one to choose, I don't need to explain it. I, I usually print everything uh, with my perceptual intent. That's it. That's basically all you have to worry about in this section here. Now you also have an adjustment for ambient light. And because I am using a profile I believe this is not being uh, active so I believe you have to um, maybe not use a profile at all I'm not too interested in that but the theory is that you can adjust your color balance depending on the ambient light that the print will be viewed under so say if you're in a gallery and they don't have the correct daylight balance bulbs say for instance they have more yellowish incandescent type bulbs then you can adjust the color balance basically what it will do is it will add a little blue it will add a little slight blue cast the same thing uh, for fluorescent lighting but again I want to color balance my prints to a default daylight balance light source so I do not mess with that at all okay so let's go back to the default and we will find it here in a second Pro Luster. Oh, by the way, the 1, 2, and 3 equals your quality setting. So we want to print this at the best quality. So we're going to choose that 1 slash 2 plugin. Now, let's see what this does. Color matching. It says use black point compensation. For some reason, it is uncheckable. So I will have to look deeper into that. Maybe some of you that have actually played with the uh, plugin a lot more than I have can shed some light. So anyhow, we will go ahead and now look at correction. Now when you're printing a black and white, this is where you can use your sliders to change the tonality. In other words, you want to make a print that's slightly um, cooler and you come here and, and do so. If you want your print to be slightly warmer, you can do so as well. Now, one of the really, really cool things that you can do is to create a pattern print. What this does, it creates a variation collage of that image for you with slight variations in color balance. You print it out, you choose the best one the one that satisfies you the most and you take a look at the numbers that are printed right under that one perfect little image those numbers are then transferred to your X and Y color balance coordinates you can adjust for either color balance or brightness and contrast you can adjust the size of the little icons the little thumbnails or you can also adjust the amount of variation between each one of these little prints. Little, they're basically a bunch of little test prints. And I think it's great because it can also be used uh, for black and white. It especially comes into play in black and white because if you are using a canned profile and you're getting a slight cast, just print yourself one of these and you can find one of these little thumbnails that is as neutral as you want it to be get the information from the uh, little caption underneath transfer it over here add those numbers to it and you are good to go now 
Let's see what that does. Here's where you can actually change contrast, as you can see. You can do a lot of adjustments to your print right here. If you are printing without using a ICC profile, you can actually just play around as much as you want in this section here. Now, if you have a very good profile, there's really no need to ever have to delve into this section here. I certainly don't. So we reset everything back. And let's go back to the top. We're going to choose to turn this into a black and white. And now I want to go back down to the bottom. And as you can see, now this is activated. Now, let's go to the pattern print and we'll click on that. Now, what are we concerned with? We're concerned with two things here, the tone and brightness and contrast. So you could you want to make say a 13 by 19 in luster paper, the pro luster, but before you commit to a full sheet, you want to make sure that your output is going to be perfect. So you go ahead and you make yourself a pattern print first using the tone X and Y. You look at the printed results after they have dried enough and viewed under a daylight source you choose the one that appears to be the most neutral and then you come over here and you apply those settings you have to actually close that and then you go ahead and you apply whatever settings that one little thumbnail told you to apply and then you go back and this time we'll create a brightness and contrast pattern print and you click on this icon here this little radio button and now you end up with a lower contrast dark higher contrast bright and all sorts of variations in between and again remember you can change the size of the thumbnails this was available in the easy uh, printing plugin that came with the earlier versions of uh, some of the pro printers and again it comes in very handy it's a wonderful tool to have and you're you're better to waste a couple of uh, letter size sheets of paper before you commit to the large 13 by 19 and it's not really wasted because for example once you arrive at a point where you know that certain settings x and y settings will give you that neutral print you can save that you can actually save those settings within the plugin itself and you can recall them at a later date. So that's a wonderful tool to have. So let's go ahead and close it. And that's basically it, uh, people. This is all there is to this. I'm sure there are other slightly more um, long-haired adjustments what can, one can do on this plugin, but this is basically all you have to do. Let's go back to full color. Remember, I'm going to take you back in retrospect. Choose your printer. Choose your paper, choose your size, choose your feed location, your quality level, choose your layout. Let's go ahead and go back to the default. If that pleases you, then you can go ahead and uh, scroll to the next section. You're going to choose ICC profile. If you have it on auto, it will automatically choose that profile for you. Perceptual or relative color metric. And you're basically all set. Hit print. If you do not get the color you expected or the contrast and brightness or darkness or whatever, density settings that is, that you expected, you can go ahead and do a pattern print. But again, if you're using a, a custom profile such as the once a color monkey can produce, you're probably not going to have to do that as it, it really does produce outstanding results. And since my monitor is also calibrated through the same device, I basically get what I see on my monitor on print. Folks, don't forget that the monitor is a transmitted light device and photos are viewed by reflecting light upon it. And depending on the brightness of the underlying paper, that will determine how bright or how luminous that print is going to look. 
So again, two totally different animals, but your colors should match what you see on the screen, and your densities should basically match. All right, so now let's go ahead and close all this up. We're going to go ahead now and print out of Photoshop. Say, for whatever the reason, you really do not want to use the plugin. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, take you through the workflow that you need to do in order to properly use an ICC profile through Photoshop. We're going to go to File. We're going to go to Print. Okay, now once this opens, we're going to go ahead and choose the 100 XPS and we're going to go to print settings. That's the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I have turned off color management. I have luster picked, I have letter size picked. And this is the this is the tick box that you need to tick. It's going to take you to manual color adjustments and then we're going to click on matching and here we're going to hit none. That's what we want. And that's actually what I have set as my default on the devices and printers. Okay, so now we have that checked and of course my quality is set on high. So we'll go ahead and close that up. So basically now we're going to change the orientation because our print image that we were trying to print is oriented landscape. So we can so we can either rotate the image or within the Photoshop printing utility we can change that to landscape. Okay, now the default is for the printer to manage colors. Well, we have told the printer not to manage colors. So we're going to change that to Photoshop manages colors. And again, remember, uh, as, as you can see, it has defaulted to the Pro Luster. I do have that custom one. Here we go. It was actually closer to the top than I thought. So go ahead and click on it. And we're good to go. Perceptual and we have it at center. Of course you can also adjust the scale of the print basically on the fly. I can center it with a huge border if I so wish. Of course I don't want to do that. Try 90. Oops. And okay we'll go ahead and use that and that's basically it. Now, there is a way to sort of uh, do a soft proof of what this is going to look like. And as you can see, it barely changed. Of course, when I match the paper surface, it always tends to darken the image. Uh, it's, it's almost exaggerating a little bit. It's not going to be that dark, believe me. It's going to be quite bright and quite colorful as that luster paper is. That's basically it. So we are done. All we have to do now is hit print. So on retrospect, remember, Photoshop manages colors. Pick your profile, relative or perceptual, in your driver. Make sure that you have clicked this color intensity manual adjustment box. And then within it, go to matching in none. On a Mac, it's a little bit different. I'm not a Mac user, so I apologize to you Mac users out there. There is a way to do that. You might look on the Canon site or some of the printing forums for more information on that. Okay, now let's go ahead and jump over to Lightroom real quick. All right, so I just happen to have something open. I'll go ahead and uh, I will not take you through the adjustments for Lightroom. That's another subject matter. What I'm going to take you through is how to set up the printer. If you saw what I just did, I went over to the lower left side where it says Page Setup. Click on that. I will locate the Pro 100 XPS. Now remember, I am working directly from my RAW file, so I want to definitely this time use that XPS uh, driver. So click on that. And again, we have these settings defaulted as I said earlier so they're going to come up but we'll take you through the motions again and done and we are done that's it so now all we have to do 
Now once I change printers, it changed my layout from what it was before. So I'll go ahead and take off zoom to fit and maybe do, 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 top and bottom margin. Give it a big old border. I know that'll that'll upset a lot of people, but I like my borders anyway. Alright, so then we're gonna go to color management and here we're going to click it's either managed by printer but don't don't forget we turned off color management within the printer driver so we must actually click on other this will open up our complete list of profiles and again we're going to go down to where my little profile is located and here it is we'll click on it and click that little box this will now make it appear right here <coughs> excuse me and this is where it has to be located and so now Lightroom will print this image through that profile to that printer that we set up on this side if I want to make on top of that slight adjustments I can do so here for instance if the print turns out okay and you happen to want it a little bit brighter you do not have to go back to the develop module and increase the brightness you can do so right here but I know from previous testing that that's unnecessary as it does match very well so here we have relative or perceptual and that's basically it so again we're gonna set up our printer options here make sure that it is not controlling color high size of paper type and photo printing and I always leave it at borderless doesn't really matter okay so then we close that up and now that's going to be remembered then we locate our profile click on it and print now if I print it's going to print a file without even it's going to send it directly to the printer if I hit printer it's going to open up the dialog again and gives you a second chance for you to check your your settings so I've basically sent this to the printer right now this one sends one copy to the printer immediately this one opens up the printer dialog and allows you to uh, double check everything for a second time okay so we'll go ahead and close that up I'm gonna jump directly over to QImage and show you how to print from QImage using the Pro 100 in a color managed workflow. I'm running QImage Ultimate 2014.117 it's the latest version. We'll just go ahead and load any image here and again I'm not gonna get into the particulars of QImage. It's a very steep learning curve. It does a lot of things. This program it's wonderful. I this is what I print out of 90% of the time. I've also been known that if my image files do not require a lot of work in Photoshop, I will do most of the processing within QImage. QImage has a wonderful raw image processor and gives you a lot of different controls to allow you to work within the raw workflow. You're basically not converting anything to any of the raw files to any other format just like Lightroom. Let's go ahead and, and uh, tell QImage that we want to use our wonderful Canon Pro 100 XPS. We're going to check everything is set by default again just like we did earlier and that is all set. Now because I changed printers it changed my layout. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and here we're going to choose I want a minimum width of say 6.5 and so now when I load this image it's going to fit within that minimum width and give me a nice border all around if I frame this it'll look very nicely with that nice white border like that okay so let's go ahead and we're going to now click on this little button here that says ICC, printer ICC. 
this will open up our loaded ICC profiles again we're going to go ahead and look I clicked on date so that I can sort by date because I know that the ones I just created are way at the bottom okay so now I have chosen that one I'm using perceptual general photos black point compensation by the way you can use that on all the prints that we have made regardless of what app we were using and that's basically it folks if I click here I'm gonna send that to the printer and it's going to match what I see right here as long as I'm printing to ProLuster paper well I hope you um, enjoy this video it takes a lot less time to do it than it takes my long-winded self to describe it I just want to make sure that there are no questions after you have viewed this if you have any questions though feel free to um, contact me either via PM on either the deep preview printer form or the nifty stuff form okay so until the next time happy printing bye bye